In this episode of Mind Pump, we talk about an exercise tool that is versatile and extremely valuable for all lifters of all experience levels, from beginner to advanced. Now, we're talking about the stability ball. Now, for a while there, it looked like everybody was training on one. Then it seemed to get abused, and people threw the baby out with the bathwater. So we talk about, in this episode, how to properly use this tool to maximize muscle building, fat loss, how to help you how to use this tool to help your body improve faster. We talk about everything from the history of this tool, the stability ball, and we also talk about how we use it with our clients and we talk about our favorite exercises with the stability ball. Now this episode is brought to you by our sponsor, Four Sigmatic. Now Four Sigmatic makes some of the best adaptogenic mushroom-based supplements out there. Now these are supplements that you can take to, take to help your body deal with stress to improve your body's ability to adapt to stress. Now, stress comes in many forms. One of those forms is exercise. So oftentimes, adaptogenic herbs can help your body actually adapt to your workout routines. In other words, build better muscle, faster, help your body burn body fat, give you better sleep. Four Sigmatic is one of the best sources. Again, they're one of our sponsors. And because you listen to Mind Pump, you get a huge discount. So here's what you got to do. Go to foursigmatic.com, that's F-O-U-R-S-I-G-M-A-T-I-C.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code mind pump at checkout for 15% off any of their products. Also, this month, all month long, MAPS Starter is 50% off. Now, MAPS Starter is an excellent at-home workout program that utilizes dumbbells and a stability ball. Now, this program is ideal for beginners people who need to rehab their body, or people who are in advanced shape who need to go back and revisit their form, their technique, learn how to connect better to their muscles. In other words, Map Starter is a program that can benefit anybody. Again, it's 50% off. Here's how you get that 50% off discount. Just go to mapsstarter.com. That's M-A-P-S-S-T-A-R-T-E-R.com and use the code STARTER. 50. That's S T A R T E R 50, no space for the discount. We uh, recently brought something up in an episode, and I think that we should we should bring something back and we should make it cool again. Oh, mm. I like this. Yeah, well, you, brought, sexy you, back. you brought this up, I think, Sal, in an episode. And, uh, and then, of course, this month, uh, you know, we have the starter sale going on right now. So it's uh, like always, whenever we have something going on like that, it, it makes me go back through it and remember like, oh, when we created it and like the stuff behind it that like made it so valuable. And, you know, in there is a lot of stability ball training mm -hmm. and, you know, it's fallen out of favor, I think for a lot of the wrong reasons. And I think we should, we should make it cool again. You know, what's funny is yeah. that, so he, something that the fitness space does exceptionally well unfortunately, is they take something with merit and value and then they- They abuse the hell out of they it. They mess it up. Yeah. They mess it up and it becomes this crazy be-all, end-all thing. And then because of that, everybody it loses its value and everybody forgets it because the stability ball has tremendous value. I remember distinctly when stability balls became a part of the trainer's uh, repertoire. And it was actually- a ton of value. I remember when we never used them, then they came into the scene, we used them with our clients, and the value and the benefits were tremendous. But then again, the fitness space does this. It be, it went crazy, mm -hmm. and then everything was stability ball, and it was people standing on it, doing squats with heavy barbells. They and cut it in half, made it into a new thing. There's like pads that are unstable. It just was all about unstable. It, and, it, and what happened is because of that, it lost its value. Because And everybody said, oh, it's not. That's crazy. There's no value to it. So let's just throw it away completely, which is a complete travesty because 100% real talk, besides barbells and dumbbells, the number one used tool that I had with my clients that I would bring out probably almost in every workout, if not every workout, was the stability ball. There's nothing else I can think of, again, besides barbells and dumbbells, that I used nearly as much, regardless of my client's experience, if they were advanced or beginner, if it was correctional work. If you know how to use it, it's got tremendous value. I mean, 
Did you, did you, I'm sure you guys use it like crazy too. Oh no. yeah. I mean, if you think about like your average client that would come in, uh, the, the biggest hurdle initially is to get them stable, to, to be able to have them function properly and be able to control their body. And so this is such a valuable tool uh, to be able to teach them certain things like the squat and uh, just even sitting and, and lifting weights and to be able to get access to their core and be able to feel what it feels like to be sturdy and stable was, was real crucial. Mm -hmm. Well, if I'm being honest, there's this, you know, kind of curve that I went through. Like, so when, when I first started, right. So I started off in 2000 and that really was, uh, the peak or getting to the peak of uh, stability balls. Yeah, I saw I saw it start to take off in about in ninety eight or nine. I remember right. I started ninety seven. So mm -hmm. two thousand, two thousand one, two thousand two. That whole range, I would say, was like the peak of you know stability ball training, and I loved it. Like I I was fully bought into it to the point where I was part of the problem. Right, so I was part of the. The trainers that that learned how to use it, that found the benefit behind it, and then it was like stability ball everything. Yeah, you just get excited. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. That's a twenty stability curls. Twenty one year old trainer who's learned something new and valuable, and mm -hmm. I think that's I think this is common in our space. I think almost anything that we see that gets mass appeal or popularity is rooted in some good, yeah. right? Is rooted in some truth. But it's like the space for us to bastardize something and abuse it. And I, too, was responsible for probably abusing it. I, I used it, and then it turned into like a almost like a gimmick that I had to get everybody on it because I thought I was so fascinated by it. Mm. And then you see me fall off of that and stop using it almost altogether and then realize when I'm not using it anymore for a few years that I am missing out on some some really good benefits. And then you see the reintroduction later on in my career again. And then I would say towards the end of my training career that not a day would go by that I didn't train at least one client with it in my mm -hmm. day. So that's mm -hmm. how regularly I use that tool. So same here. I, yeah, I would I would argue that I use it as much or more than any other like tool inside the gym. Uh, because it does have tremendous value and application for all levels of fitness. Totally. Yeah. And now you guys know the the history of it. it it's pretty interesting, right? It was actually yeah. invented uh, 1963 by an Italian plastics uh, manufacturer. I can't believe you didn't know this. That, I know. I, had, I, I didn't know this before, and yeah. I had to look it up. But <laughs> he he created these vinyl balls that were durable, burst resistant, and he sold them throughout Europe. And now he discovered them in Switzerland, okay? But he's the one that produced them. So they're called Swiss balls sometimes. They were actually invented by an Italian mm. or actually marketed by an Italian anyway. Yeah. Um, but they were first used by no physio physiotherapists because they were used for treatment of newborns and infants with cere cerebral palsy. Um, there were physical therapy schools that used it because it was so effective at, again, at therapy, at helping people with neurological, orthopedic uh, you know, applications. And it didn't really enter into the fitness space uh, until the uh, like in the small part until the late 80s, mm -hmm. uh, our friend Paul Check being one of the pioneers who brought it uh, into the space. By the way, Paul Check, yep, one of the I mean, if you want to talk about somebody who predicted everything that became great in the fitness space, he's like a guru. Of, I mean, this guy mm -hmm. was talking about microbiomes when people would laugh him out of the room. He was, he was using. Uh, these stability balls. Yeah, he was way thought. ahead of his time. I mean, he saw this stability ball in the corner there and was just like, you know, around all these physical therapists and, and uh, you know, was like, why is nobody using this? What is this used for? Figured out, you know, a way to apply this to athletes even. And mm -hmm. that's where he took off with a it. A lot of people don't know this, but he was actually, didn't he coach or was part of the strength and conditioning uh, from the some Bulls. Of the Bulls. The mm -hmm. Bulls and, and the All Blacks. And and one of the things that he used was a stability ball. Um, mm -hmm. And that's part of how it started to kind of get popular because a lot of times fitness techniques and strategies and tools start with professional athletes or at least they become popular because people see pros using it. And or then they like in or rehab. Major, right? we, we, I mean, we recently talked about BFR, mm -hmm. right? And that's kind of like the, this started in the physical therapy world kind of first, yes. right? And then it's now, okay, if there's application there, how can we use this with advanced athletes and like even the average gym goer? And I know Paul was responsible for 
part of that move. He's probably one of the first guys to ever probably grab hundred pound dumbbells and get on the stability. Exactly. Yeah, Up yeah. until that point, it was very you know I think the your, therapy. Yeah, therapy based. Then you weren't using anybody with heavy weight, but he's one of the first people no. to really and, and push it, the limits of it. And again, I want to be clear: it had so much value in the fitness space. And by the way, this is a, a characteristic of trainers. Okay, I'm just going to out all trainers. When you learn something new and it's valuable and you see benefit to it, you tend to become obsessed for a short period yeah, of time. You get so, excited. Yeah, so it's like you learn you know, a new technique for stretching and then that becomes what you do all the time or you learn a new way of deadlifting and that's what you do all the time. So yes, trainers are, are partially responsible. But I mean, to shift blame away from them, you used these things. If you use them properly, you saw your client's progress explode. Then you use it on yourself. This is what I did is I would use it with clients. And then I'd start using it on myself for certain things, and I saw a lot of value. But again, it got abused so much that what we did is we threw the baby out with the bathwater. We we completely discarded it. It's no, it's not nearly as popular anymore to use uh, stability balls, which is terrible because there are things that the stability ball does better than almost anything else. There's tremendous benefits to using them. Yeah, we're here to save the baby. Well, yeah, I, this but it reminds me so much of the BFR thing where. Where it starts to become a problem is when it starts to replace some of the foundational things totally. that really build a physique. It gets out of its lane of tool, right? To like this is the core, and and that and that's that's exactly what I, I think that's a perfect way to compare it because I see that I saw or I see the same thing happening with BFR because that's become popular in the la in the last five mm -hmm. years or so. Now that's becoming a thing, and we talked about it early on when the podcast first started. Like, listen, there's tremendous value in this tool, but. If it starts to replace your traditional strength training, now you're losing. You're, now you're losing a lot of the benefits you could be getting if you're using it as something intermittently or to supplement. Tools have mm -hmm. to be used appropriately. Any tool. I mean, if you have a screwdriver and you're using the screwdriver to hammer nails, it's not going to be very effective. The the stability ball is a very effective tool when used appropriately and when phased in appropriately. The number one benefit I see across the board with the physio ball is it is a phenomenal way to incur encourage perfect form. Mm -hmm. Now, some people might think this isn't that big of a deal. Oh, no, it's a huge deal. Look, th here's the difference. I'll give you an example, okay? Why do bodybuilders do seated curls instead of standing curls? Why do they do seated shoulder press instead of standing? Same exercise. It's the same movement. Why do they choose seated sometimes over standing? Yeah. It places them in better posture. It, it places them in, in a different, better posture. And what do they say? What do bodybuilders say? Oh, it eliminates cheating, yeah. perfects my form. Why do people use an arm blaster? Why do they do all these different techniques that look almost identical to the previous one? It's oftentimes they do it because it encourages perfect form. Now, I can't think of anything that's more important in resistance training than form. It's the the in fact form will take an exercise from effective to not effective or worse make it dangerous. So how does the physio ball do this? Well, if you ever sat on one and tried to do a shoulder press, you know, okay, you cannot sit on a physio ball and do a crappy form shoulder press. You're gonna bounce, roll. If your core isn't tight and active, if you're not sitting with good posture, mm -hmm. if you're bouncing the weights, not having complete full ranges of controlled movement. You are going to lose your balance. That ball is ensuring perfect form. Now, why is that important? Is it because you need a reminder? Kind of. That's part of it. But here's the other part of it. What you practice is what you get good at. What you train is what you get strong at. So if you train in a way that encourages and forces perfect form, the strength that you'll develop is in perfect form. Then you move, again, if you use it as a tool, then you move to the other foundational movements, and those movements now become far more effective. Well, I remember it as a, a trainer hack. You know, one of the best ways, and this is also the the birth of my split stance bicep curl or tricep pushdown yes, that I always teach. Totally, the philosophy comes from stability ball training. So I first, you know, picked up on that. Like, oh wow, when I put a client on a ball and I teach them a chest press or a shoulder press, it's an unstable environment. So it forces them to activate their core. I know when they activate their core, they brace at their spine. So they have good, good spine alignment and they can't cheat the exercise left or right or leverage it mm. because then they'll roll off the ball. Mm -hmm. And that was really what got my wheels turning on. Oh, okay. Wow. So 
And what makes that nice when you're cueing, like I can cue all the shoulder or chest movements. And I know that because it's an unstable environment, they have to do it slow and controlled. It was just a great trainer hack. It reminds me of the split stance thing I did later. Also doing things like a step up to a balance or a lunge to a balance. That's why you like the Z press so much. That yeah. forces you to have really, really good form. And most people struggle with that, especially when, and you guys remember this, right? Like I could always tell when I got a uh, you know normal average client, or I got a client with a, an athletic background, like if I got a client that you know is in their 30s or 40s and they played sports their whole life, I can tell them cues or show them exercises, and then mechanically they just kind of get into it. They look at mm -hmm. me, mm -hmm. they commit. Now, if you're somebody who didn't train that way, which is a majority of the population, mm -hmm. most people aren't don't have athletic backgrounds, and you're just trying to teach something as fundamental as a shoulder press or a bicep mm -hmm. curl or a chest press. Man, that is a lot of moving parts for someone to do that with good form, and the stability ball would help with forcing them into that good posture. Yeah, I love them uh, mainly because if I got a new client that uh, I wanted to to really build this this control, uh, I, I always hated putting them on a bench and, and doing things where everything was you know conformed to good posture. So to be able to have an option of putting them in a horizontal position where they have to isometrically hold their hips up while they're also uh, you know lifting weights to me was was invaluable. That mm -hmm. was such a great way for to to teach them how to uh, you know control their body and also get more hip extension, which you know they weren't getting throughout their day because they're seated all the time. Oh, I got something on that. So I'm going to talk to the advanced lifters right now. Okay, so here you are. You've been working out for a long time. You built some good muscle and strength. Okay, here's the deal. And I'll I'll use one of our favorite exercises, one of the what we would consider one of the top five or six movements for building upper body muscle and strength: the bench press. Okay, the bench press, great exercise. I would put it. Top five, definitely top 10, one of the most effective exercises. Now, I remember years ago, after years of training, after years of training, trying to get a better bench. Of course, when I was a kid, bench press was how you measured your strength. Nobody asked you how much you could squat or how much you could curl. Everything was how much could you bench. So I was always trying to get a higher bench press. And I remember working with a power lifter. And power mm. lifters, yeah. of course, the best bench pressers in the world. And something that he told me at first didn't make any sense. He said to me, Use leg drive, leg drive to get the bar up. And I was mm -hmm. like, leg drive? Like my legs, what the heck do then my legs have to do with a bench press? Besides keeping my balance, what does it have to do with, with, with me pressing more weight? And he used this example. He said, okay. He said, squeeze your right hand as hard as you can, but keep your entire body relaxed. Mm -hmm. Don't tense up your face. Don't tense up the other arm. Just relax your whole body, but just squeeze your right hand as hard as you can. Do that. And he goes, okay, now what I want you to do is squeeze your right hand as hard as you can, but now tense up your whole body and let me know the difference. Now, if you're trying this out now, if you're listening to the podcast and you're testing this, what you're probably going to find is that when you tense up your whole body, the squeeze is much stronger. In fact, we can measure this. If I gave you something that you could measure your strength, tensing up your entire body activates the central nervous system fully, activates more muscle fibers, which long-term means you're going to build more muscle, and gives you more strength. This is a technique that lifters understand. Now, one of the hardest things to teach somebody is to activate their whole body without cheating while doing a movement to maximize the effectiveness of the exercise. So if I have someone on a bench press and I tell people, leg drive, do this, activate your core, and it's like, oh, it's so much. In fact, if you're an advanced lifter, you might actually forget this. You might not even be necessarily good at this. Okay. Put yourself on a stability ball. Roll down so that the stability ball is underneath your shoulders and do a chest press with dumbbells. Guess what's going to be forced to be activated? Everything. Mm -hmm. You are now learning how to press. And I don't mean just learning like, oh, I figured it out. I mean, your body is actually adapting and your central nervous system is adapting to learn how to press when everything is activated and tight. And so now how does this translate to the, to the advanced lifter? Do spend some time doing some presses with a physio ball. Then go to your traditional bench press and watch what happens to how connected you are to your body. Watch what happens to your strength. And then downstream, of course, look how much more muscle you build. I want to circle back to what Justin said because um, the first trainer hack was the stability uh, component of the stability ball and what that did for form and technique. The second thing that was you know paradigm shattering for me as a coach 
was hip extension. And the reason why this was such a game, the stability ball was such a game changer in this in this area. And let's let's explain why that's so important as a coach. After you've trained tons and tons of people, you start to realize that I would say 80 plus percent of people have an anterior pelvic tilt to mm-hmm. at, it's at some degree. So the butt sticks out. Right. So and the and the deal with low chronic back pain, tight hip flexors. This is super common. Big we, source of pain is this. Yes, extremely, extremely common. And the the counter exercise to counter that is hip extension, is finding which would great obviously the best moves are deadlifts and things like that. But if you have a client that struggles with connecting to their posterior chain, their butt, getting their glutes to activate in that hip extension. If they have a hard time doing that, and they're not doing, and by the way, just deadlifting for five sets in a in a in a, in a, a routine two or three times a week is still not enough to counter all the work that they're doing by sitting in a in a desk all day long and doing the opposite of what mm-hmm. you're trying to work on. So by doing these movements like the like the chest press with the emphasis on the hip extension, which was an area that I saw a lot of coaches and trainers not do. They would put them on the ball because they saw that it was popular and it was an unstable environment. And so, But then they would just let the hips sink down. Mm-hmm. And to me, the, one of the most beneficial parts of using the stability ball is to focus on the hip extension mm-hmm. part because so many people suffer from that. So I got a tremendous amount of value of making that connection and teaching clients, listen, I know we're doing chest press right now, but talking to you like you just said about the full body, Sal, is I want you to think about everything. I want to think about your feet that are planted in the ground. I want you thinking about your butt being squeezed and keeping that hip extension. As this gets tiring, as we get hard, as the weights get heavier and this gets more, this gets more difficult, you're going to notice your hips are going to want to sag and you're going to hear me cueing the whole time. And I remember that. Oh, sque- keep squeezing your glutes, keep your butt yep, squeezed, yep, yep. you know, because they do three or four, they're, they're unstable, they start thinking about all these things. And then all of a sudden you see it sink back down again and just getting them to learn that good mind muscle connection Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to that really carries over to other exercises that I teach them and then their everyday behaviors. That's why I I, I literally would not even use the bench. I wouldn't use anything horizontal bench uh, to have them. I would use the stability ball until they got that concept down first. That was so crucial because just like you guys are saying, that translates to everything after that. They call that irradiation. How can I then, you know, uh, you know, promote that in everything else that I do exercise wise. There's a way to do that where now I'm stable because I can squeeze, I could feel my way into that position and now I'm capable of lifting even more. Yep. I would do it the same way, Justin. And then another way I would use it is when I would have advanced lifters who we hadn't gone through a cycle of, you know, stability ball training for a while. We go right back in into a four week or five week cycle of using the stability ball, I'd bring them back. Just like mobility, I, you know, I'm working on something that may be causing a plateau. We would focus on that. It would perfect their form, teach them how to connect. Then we'd go back to more of our traditional lifts, and we would see their plateau break. They'd start to break through the plateau and yep. surpass their previous best. The other thing I would get, this was a, a common uh, comment that I would get, especially for my female clients, was just what you guys were talking about. You're getting hip extension. You're activating the glutes. One of the side effects of that that people would always tell me is, my butt. My butt is looking good. It's looking rounder. What's going on? I'm like, well, besides the fact that we're training your butt with specific exercises, because we're activating it so often with the stability ball, mm-hmm. it's like you're doing trigger sessions throughout right. the day. It gets a lot more involved. It does. Now, the other thing is the proprioception that you gain from using a stability ball. So that's a complicated term. So here's what proprioception means. It means you know where your body is in space. Okay, You're aware of of where your body is in space. An extreme example, a super high level extreme example would be a gymnast or a diver. You know, when you see a diver jump off of a, a, you know, a really high uh, position, you watch them spin and turn and they know exactly when to point down and where the water is. Now the average person, if you spin me four or five times, I have no, no idea where left is or right is up or down, right? So that's an extreme example of proprioception. Now, what about for the average person? Well, if you've ever done a backstep lunge or a side lunge or a row that's inverted with a cable or any other exercise and you find yourself losing balance or it's hard to connect or can't figure out your positioning. And, and what happens when you're, when you're doing that is you can't maximize the exercise. You can't maximize the muscle building, 
the metabolism boosting effects of the exercise because your body's proprioception is the limiting factor. If your proprioception, if you're doing a barbell squat, which is, you know, you need basic proprioceptive ability for, but if you can't balance, there's no way you can push heavy weight to maximize the effects. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a lot of exercises that require you to step and move, even basic exercises. Again, a back step lunge is an example of this. If your proprioceptive ability is what's lacking, you're not going to get. You're not going to reap the benefits of that exercise. The, phys, the the stability ball encourages and strengthens proprioceptive ability because of the balance factor. Because you need to you need to constantly think of where your body is in space so that you don't roll off the ball or so that you your position is off. The ball is constantly giving you feedback, and again, what you train is what you strengthen. The, 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 the diver and the gymnast weren't born with that level of proprioceptive ability. They trained it. You also can improve your proprioceptive ability, and the stability ball is a fantastic way to do this. Well, and the, and the carryover to real life is, is incredible. I mean, especially when you talk about getting in the advanced age category or even is just starting to get above 35 and 40. Uh, I mean, we, we talked before about, you know, the things, the importance of even plyos and being able to jump out of our truck and yeah. do random stuff like that. You know, when you when you have somebody who you've trained as a client of yours and you've you've incorporated stability ball training like this, these are the ones that are less likely to fall down the stairs when they're walking in or or turn a, a certain way and then, you know, bust their knee or do something because they're used to kind of being in this unstable environment. So then when it happens to them in real life, they regather themselves mm -hmm. without even with subconsciously just just do it because they've been training that. So there's like these underlining things that are happening besides just, oh, the benefits of it's for your core. Oh, it's benefits for mm -hmm. hip, stiction, uh, hip extension. OK, blah, blah, blah. That's all great stuff. But just for practical, functional living and the things that may happen to you, everybody has had. I can't. Yes. How many times you've been in the back in the shower, right? And just kind of stepped one way and lost your balance a little yep. bit. Oh yeah. I mean, how many times has that happened to you as an adult? And you go like, I I don't know. <laughs> that could have been yeah. bad. Right. <laughs> they could have been really bad. I could have went down. And I think, man, that's thank God for my training that I do. That mm -hmm. my body kind of just reacted and it got it got yep. it got stable. Can right navigate away. through that. Yep. Right. Yep. Now, one of my other favorite things about the stability ball that I. I think is very relevant today is it's a very inexpensive, uh, easy to use tool that you can use at home. Now today that's very relevant because lots of people may not have access to gyms. They may be closed. Some of them are reopening, but they're reopening with new parameters. I just read an article saying that most gyms will have to reopen and allow, you know, they'll be open for 24 hour fitness. For, for, for example, actually said this, they put out a statement and said that they're going to open their gyms for 60 minutes at a time only going to allow about 30% capacity, and then they'll have to close for 30 minutes after every 60 minutes for deep cleaning. That's how wow. you do it? Right. So, wow. so you're, you, it's going to be very hard to have access to gyms. And then maybe you do have access, but you're still a little uh, weary. Maybe you want to stay inside. You're not, mm. You don't really feel comfortable in that environment sharing equipment. A physio ball or stability ball used at home um, very inexpensive. You can buy them for 20 bucks, 30 bucks, almost anywhere. They're, you can buy them at Target or Walmart. You can buy them online, and they're so versatile. Like there's there's hundreds of exercises that you could you you could do on a stability ball, uh, and again, an inexpensive, very durable tool that you can use. Um, now, here's something that I think stability balls are superior for across the board because we are referring to the stability ball as a tool. Okay, it's not going to replace barbells and dumbbells. It's not going to replace your fundamental you know, movements and exercises. It is a tool though that you can use and inject if you're advanced, inject cycles of it to, to, to amplify your progress, break through plateaus. If you're a beginner, great way to teach you form, stability. It's a phenomenal tool, but there is one area where the stability ball is superior. There is nothing better than this, than the stability ball for ab training, ab and core training. Nothing comes close. It's the only, I've seen every ab and core machine uh, in existence. In fact, I love machines because I love to study them, see how they work. Ab and core machines are terrible. I've never had one where if I didn't know precisely how to connect to my abs and work it, I would go in there and it would it just wouldn't work or would hurt my back. The stability ball, because of the shape of it, it allows you to go into full extension and full contraction of the lumbar spine, which lets you activate. With support. With support. Right. And it lets you activate your abs in a phenomenal way. So for ab and core training, it's the only tool 
that I use aside from the floor or a bench yeah. or whatever or bands or something like that. You know, talking all about this too, this just reminds me of the the theme I think during this whole COVID that we've been trying to express to people. Instead of getting so down that your your gym isn't available or getting frustrated because you don't have access to all the things you had access to, this is a perfect time to be focusing on other types of modalities or mm -hmm. other tools that you weren't potentially using. You bring up a great point, Salam, is stability ball is nothing. Most people probably have them laying around their house somewhere or collecting dust somewhere. Yep. Mm -hmm. And if not, they are cheap as hell on Amazon. It could be at your house the next day. And you can. You can get an entire full body workout using that and a pair of dumbbells. You can get a great workout. Oh, well, that's how we design Map Starter. Literally, right. it's a stability ball and dumbbells and it's a full body workout. That's why it's so versatile, so inexpensive. So easy to use, easy to store. If you deflate it, you can fit anywhere. Um, it's it's the, it's the number one tool, I would say. If somebody says, hey, what should I get for my home gym? I don't have much space. Besides dumbbells, it's always the first thing that I say. Mm -hmm. um, I'll, you know, Bands, dumbbells, and a stability ball is typically uh, the top of the list. And if it's something that you've been neglecting, okay, so if you're the hardcore gym goer that's listening right now and you don't have access to your gym and you're you know, 500 pounds to be lifting mm – -hmm. You know, this is a great opportunity of, you know what, I probably would have never caught myself doing stability ball work inside my gym where I mm -hmm. love lifting and deadlifting and doing crit. Why not do something like that right now? Refocus or reframe your goal. Mm -hmm. Everybody needs this in their life. So find a way to incorporate this yeah, in your Yeah, you're greasing the groove. You're, you're, you're going back in and you're making sure that all the, the hinges, all the joints, everything – uh, you know, we're building that support system up again. And this is such a valuable tool to, you know, to, to provide for your body to really feel the effects of that. And then, you know, take take that and go back to barbell training and see what kind of a difference that makes. That's the, the biggest myth around, besides the fact that it was abused and people did silly, stupid stuff on it, okay? The biggest myth around stability ball training is that it's only for beginners. That is a very, that makes me upset because the value that you get, just like all tools, tools in fitness, if you utilize them properly, they bring you continued value forever, okay? Yeah. Huge, huge myth. Now, it's 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 part of the myth that like it doesn't build muscle. Oh, I'm advanced. What am I going to use a, a stability ball for? It's not going to really do much for me. It builds muscle the same way or similarly to how mobility training does. Now, direct mm -hmm. mobility training, sure. You do proper mobility training, you're not going to come out with bigger arms or bigger legs or a bigger chest. But you are going to come out in a way to where you're going to break through – your previous plateaus. Now you you were stuck at a two hundred pound squat. Mm -hmm. Now you get up to two fifty because you what was stopping you before was lack of mobility. Well, same thing with stability ball training. You go through phases of stability ball training, and you watch what happens. You activate your muscles differently. Mm -hmm. Form starts to change. It slows you down. Then you go back to your traditional lifting, and holy cow! Now I'm breaking through my plateaus. So. The myth that it's for beginners and the myth that it doesn't build muscle oh. kills it, and it's sad it because it's not true. It highlights cracks you know, in the kinetic chain. It, it, it's the same thing. It's the same mentality I have with unilateral training, and this is why I'm always trying to bring that up because there's periods where you need to go back and you need to revisit unilateral training. You need to revisit stability ball training because it it, it shows, you know, how your training has affected uh, your, your body and, and now see, you know, where the discrepancies lie. And I, I can address those things specifically with, you know, something like a stability ball. Totally. Let's, I think we should list some of our favorite, uh, there's, oh, there's a lot of exercises that I could go through, but I think we should list uh, some of our favorite stability ball exercises for most people. Ones that most people will probably benefit from uh, you know, from using whether you're beginner or advanced. Uh, the first one for me that comes to mind is the movement that, A, it's the first kind of squat I ever do with a brand new client. It's one of the first types of squats. And B, it's how I help people who've been working out for a long time work on activating hips, mm. getting the right knee position, on how to basically perfect their squat and C, used correctionally, it's one of my favorite it's ways. great feedback. Yes. It's real-time feedback. Yes, and it's wall the wall squats. Wall squats, phenomenal exercise for physio ball. It's a very easy one, by the way. You put it up against the wall. Your The lower back goes up against the stability ball. You kind of step away from it a little bit. And then you roll down the ball, squat down, but make sure to shoot your hips underneath it a little bit at the bottom. This helps with people who have issues with mobility. This helps with people who have issues with depth. Mm -hmm. If you're finding 
trouble activating certain parts of your of your, You're of your body. You're too far forward in your squat typically. Exactly. It's great for posture during the squat. And then let's say you're somebody who has trouble with your you know, you want to activate your side butt uh, and you find that when you squat, your knees try to cave in. Very basic, simple way to work on this. You put a resistance band around your knees, push out against it, do some wall squats with a, with a stability ball and watch that muscle light up. Well, you can also advance this. So, I mean, as we go through these exercises, I'll give you a progression for everyone that we're going to talk about also. So, you know, maybe you're a super advanced squatter and you're going like, come on, wall ball squats. Like, what am I going to do with that? I don't need to do any of that crap. Try doing that on one leg. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Try do. I mean. That's try, how you learn a pistol. It's right? a great way to start. It's a great way to learn how to pistol squat. So you have you have a little bit of assistance and, and feedback with the ball. You can push against it to help leverage. So if, if doing that seems too easy for you, then do it on one leg and see how tough it is. So every one of these exercises, and that's what's so great, even like in the program, like all these exercises are in the program, but there's, there is some ways that you can take that simple, basic exercise that I would take through with a beginner and I could radically change it and make it extremely difficult for the most advanced it, lifter. It also allows you to work around ankle mobility issues and then work on ankle mobility. So the further your feet away are from the wall, the less ankle mobility you need. And as you start to progress, move your feet closer and closer to the wall. And it does change the squat, but what it does do is teach you how to work with ankle mobility within a squat. And it's a very safe uh, and effective way to do so. The next exercise um, that I like quite a bit on the stability ball we've already talked about uh, is the chest press. Mm -hmm. I like this for the chest press for a few different reasons. Uh, one, it teaches you to activate your whole body on an exercise that a lot of people have trouble doing. Okay, When you do a press on a bench, it's really easy to lay on the bench and really just activate your upper body and maybe you know keep your feet on the floor but not much else. In fact, some people take it so far as to taking their feet off the floor right. and just – allowing the bench to support their body. Yeah, they put their feet up on the bench, I've seen quite a bit too. Yeah, so when you're doing this on a physio ball, you have to keep your whole body active. Otherwise, you're going to roll off the ball or your hips are going to sink. So it forces that that the, issue. The other thing that it does, what reminds me too of why you like it so much for abs, is because the ball is round, it allows the shoulder blades to kind of fall down yes. naturally. Mm -hmm. So one of the challenges as a, as a coach you start to put together after you've trained enough people is, man, every time I teach a chest press or, or a dumbbell press, my clients want to roll their shoulders yeah. forward because they're on a flat surface like mm -hmm. a bench. Putting them on the stability ball where it comes to kind of a point, right? It allows the scapula to kind of fold over the round ball and allows it to fall down. This is also why this is, again, stability ball training is what brought me to eventually teaching the chest ch chest fly or chest press on the foam roll. Mm -hmm. That's where that concept for me it came brings from. The shoulders down. Right, cuz it brought the shoulder blades down. I thought, "Oh, okay, if that works with a ball, if I put a st if I do a foam roll down the spine, it'll do the same same thing." Now, here's a here's a way to advance this. Now, you can you get a good sturdy high quality physio ball, you can definitely go heavy. I've seen people lift pretty heavy on it. I'm not a huge advocate of super heavy lifting with the stability ball because that's not really using it for what it's best used for. Mm. Here's another way you can advance a chest press on a uh, stability ball. Press one dumbbell. Single arm. One dumbbell or one dumbbell at a time. Okay. You want to talk that about- that in your obliques, man. Oh, boy. Yeah. You have to stabilize your whole body. You have to stay super, super tight. And then what it does, it forces you to slow the hell down mm -hmm. with your press. One way to do it is you have two dumbbells and you press one at a time. The most advanced way to do it is you put one hand on your hip and you press with just one dumbbell. And let me tell you something. You want to talk about muscle building. It forces you to really activate the pec and bring the dumbbell to the center and squeeze the chest. This is really good if you are a bench presser and you have overpowering shoulders and triceps and don't feel a lot in your chest. Try a few weeks of one arm chest presses on a stability ball go back to your bench press and see how the chest feels you can mm -hmm. also manipulate the feet right so if uh, when i start somebody off on a chest press uh, they have a very wide base with their feet that wide base helps support and makes it a lot more stable as you start to bring the feet closer oh, yeah. and closer together to a point where i mean you try just doing try doing both dumbbells and pressing with your feet together oh that's mm -hmm. hard it throws off yep. all the stability on there so that's really challenging and that's a great way to progress it before you get to like what you're saying which is an advanced really advanced 
to have one arm and do that. Well, another benefit to that I don't think a lot of people realize is, is the fact that you're fighting this rotation too because yes. the, the ball moves kind of left to right. It's round. Uh, you know, your hips have to really stay there and stabilize and be square. And this is so valuable for all movements. This is something you need to learn how to control and then uh, providing that, it, give me a stable environment. Now I have stable hips that can lock in place. You're going to lift a lot. More. I'm yes. so glad you brought that up. I told you recently I'm helping a client friend of mine with <clears throat> SI joint issues. Mm. And one of the issues with that is rotational strength or rotational stability. And so, of course, our all the exercises that I've now included in her routine have something to do with that. That's another added benefit that we didn't even touch on. When you think about the average client, how important is anti-rotational and rotational movements? Yeah, preventing in, your body from twisting because there's resistance. Yes, and having good strength and stability with that. And this, you're getting that as another added benefit. So, and you know, that's such a good point that you brought up, Sal, about, you know, this you're not ever trying to compare to your your highest dumbbell chest press or barbell press on this you have different goals it's just like the mobility i'm not going into mobility going like did i get as good of a bicep pump as i do when i do my or do my uh, my bicep curls as i did this mobility shit like no this doesn't oh this is bs i'm out no you're focusing on different you have different goals now your goal is more centered around stability control and form and technique and so instead of thinking, oh, I need to keep lifting more weight, think of how can I make this form even more pretty and better? Yeah, because mm -hmm. one of the ways it got abused, uh, not one of the main ways, but one of the ways is people then were, let's see how much I can lift on this stability ball. That's the wrong way to use that tool. You are not maximizing yeah, its the benefit. the ball's going to pop. Yeah, well, you're just not maximizing its benefit. Yeah, that that can that can also happen. Super rare, but I've actually seen yeah, that I've happen. Yeah, I've seen it happen. Yeah, which is not a good thing. You don't want to do that with 120-pound <laughs> dumbbells in your hands. I've seen that. So. Right. Another exercise I like a lot. Uh, in fact, this is one besides you know exercises for my core. This is one that's in relatively regular rotation for me, which is a shoulder press. This is what, one of the reasons why I like the shoulder press on the shoulder press on the stability ball is the same reason why I like the Z press. I can't do a shoulder press with bad form on a stability ball. It's just, it doesn't work. I'll either roll the ball everywhere. I'll start to bounce if my reps are choppy. Um, I have to have good full extension. Otherwise, again, I start to bounce. So what it does is it forces me to sit really tall. It forces me to have a slow cadence, which increases the tension on the muscle. And then I have to have full extension. I can't lean back when I'm doing the press on this stability ball because I'll literally lose my balance and fall backwards. One of my favorite, favorite shoulder exercises. Yeah, that's one of those you see common all the time, especially when you have a bench there to support is people then want to use that bench and lean back and push forward a lot mm -hmm. more than they would pulling their arms back, which is the whole point of the overhead press. Dude, in fact, it's gotten it got so bad with shoulder presses where people's shoulder mobility was so bad that machines, I, there's a lot of shoulder press machines that are designed to have you press as if you're doing a, almost a high incline press. Yeah. There's there are hammer strength yeah, it's machines a different like that. Exercise. There are nautilus machines. I've seen lots of machines like this where I'm pressing it and I'm like, why are my arms in front of me like I'm doing a high incline? They should be straight up above my head to work on that mobility and really give me that squeeze and that contraction of my shoulders. Shoulder presses on a physio ball will do that. Now, if you want to add anti rotation, more stability, you want to get more advanced, try this. One arm shoulder presses on a stability ball. Or one arm is my favorite one now. One arm kettlebell shoulder presses or one arm Arnold oh, yeah. presses on a stability ball. Oh, or, like, or like I said with Love the chest, it. bring your feet together. Try doing both together. You can do both arm pressing and bring your feet all the way together and watch how unstable that becomes. Totally. But just like the Z-Press, this is exactly the same reason why I love. I fell in love with the Z-Press is the same concept is that it just it forces you to have perfect form. And when we're pressing something over our head, again, referring back to all the clients we've trained, probably one of the most important times that you need to be careful and be safe with them. So almost everybody, I don't care how advanced they said they were when they first got in with me, I probably started them over on a stability ball first to get make sure I, they had great mechanics yeah. before we did anything so else. So the way I use it is I'll do cycles of heavy standing overhead presses. And once I start to feel like my, I'm, my progress is plateauing, then I switch to stability ball presses for a little while, go back to the standing shoulder presses, and I'm always stronger, more stable, less achy uh, from doing that. Now, uh, another exercise I like, and this uh, has to do again with the shape of the stability ball, is a pullover. When you're doing a dumbbell pullover, 
one of the, the benefits of a dumbbell pullover is that rib cage kind of extension. In fact, in the old days, now this isn't true, but this is what they used to say, and I wonder if there's some truth to this, is they used to do pullovers. First off, it was a strength exercise, so bodybuilders and strength athletes used to talk about how much they could pull over. But second, they used to talk about how it expanded the rib cage, how it strengthened the muscles in the rib cage, like the intercostals. Because when you do a pullover properly, you're supposed to breathe in deep, expand the rib cage, and get a little bit of thoracic mobility involved. Well, a, a stability ball encourages that because it's round. So when you're doing a, a pullover over a stability ball, your back will naturally go over the stability ball and improve the benefits of a dumbbell pullover. Now, it's not as much of a strength exercise, but believe me, it will contribute to strength because of the the way it's uh, it's done. Um, a, another exercise, reverse flies on the on the stability ball. I think Adam, this is one that you really enjoy. Oh, I love this one. Well, yeah. because when you do the when you do the reverse flies on it, you almost get kind of the prone cobra move on it, also, which mm -hmm. is also we didn't this not one we listed, but another great one. It is such a great one. It's what we, when you, again going back to the things, the common things that you see with clients after you've trained enough, you start to realize the areas that you know, a majority of them need to be working on. And this is one of them, like the reverse fly, the prone Cobra, they all kind of fall in the same category mm -hmm. of, you know, bringing the shoulder, the shoulder blades back. And then the chest being up mm. for good posture is just, it's an area that I don't think anybody can spend enough time in because we're doing everything in front of us all the time. And so it's one of my, my favorite moves to teach. Yeah. Now, of course, ball crunches, I think doing crunches and ab work on a, a stability ball, that's the best. There is no better general. There's a lot of great core exercises, so I'm not saying there aren't other great ones, mm -hmm. and I do a lot of them, and I've trained a lot of them, but the one that's generally the best is the ones on the – if it's done properly, are the ones on a stability ball, and it's the best for beginners to advance. If you're advanced, you got a super strong core, mm -hmm. try long lever crunches over a stability ball with really, really good form and see what happens. Well, it's nice because it forms, too, in that natural arch in your lower back. And so, it also, I mean, it's something that – and it's unstable. So already before even getting into the you know into the right position, you start to feel that your your core is lighting up. Like it it, 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 it creates the environment for you to, to already be able to have access to that and stimulate the abs. And now I'm going to take it down mm -hmm. into depths, and I'm really going to challenge it even further. So you don't really have to do, you know – crazy range of motion, you're going to feel it right away. Yeah, I got one more I want to throw in there. And 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 this one is a good one. I like this exercise. It's good for a variety of different reasons, but I like it for one reason in particular. There is one machine in the gym that every client, almost every client I've ever trained always tells me, always asks me, is there a way I could do something like this at home? Okay. Yeah. That's a leg curl machine. Okay. For whatever reason, People love the leg curl machine. I think because it works the hamstrings in a specific way. Now, some of the best hamstring exercises involve the hips, like a Romanian deadlift, mm -hmm. a single leg deadlift, those types of exercises. I think those are the best hamstring exercises. But the curling of the leg, you can't mimic that without a leg curl machine, except mm. when you have a stability ball. Right. Hard. Very it hard. hard, especially when you do it with you know your hips extended in yes. the bridge, which yes. is the proper way I would say to yeah. recommend. Yep. And if you are super strong and gangster, you can do that with one. Oh, one really leg. hard, very yeah. very hard. But that's a great. I mean, that's you brutal. want to talk about a blaster for somebody? You want to get a you, hamstring pump? Yeah, you do this, and you know what's funny? I used to teach this uh, to my advanced clients who were really trying to build their hamstrings. When we would do a lot of volume, and they would do a leg curl. One way I would get them to connect, because one problem that happens on a leg curl machine, especially the ones where you lay in your stomach, is as you curl the leg up with your ankles, their hips will shoot up. So it's like they're activating their hip flexors yeah. and then curling the legs up. So what I'll tell them to do is I'd say, try to lift your legs off the bench. What I'm really doing is having them activate their glutes, and which activates their hamstrings also. I'd say, okay, try to lift your legs off the bench while you're curling the leg back. Watch how you feel. And all of them go, oh my gosh, I feel my hamstrings so more, so mm -hmm. much more. And that naturally happens with leg curls on a stability ball because you are in hip extension. Then you're curling your legs back. And so you're getting this really, really good hamstring activation through this exercise. In fact, again, one of the best ways to get a pump in your hamstrings is leg curls on a stability ball. Love it. That's it. So with that, go to mindpumpfree.com, download all of our guides, books, and resources. You can also find your favorite podcast hosts of all time, on Instagram, you can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin. 
You can find me at Mind Pump Sal and Adam at Mind Pump Adam.